Hey everybody, this one is about um, filing judicial complaints. I think that um, we all need to be doing more of this. We, there's, there's systems in place to get a remedy and this is one of them. And uh, so we all need to do this. This is actually the website for the State Commission on Judicial Conduct. And um, if you go here to disciplinary actions, um, on the 26th of August, they did a public admonition or order of additional education on this um, one judge, Justice of the Peace in Horseshoe Bay uh, in Texas. And then here's another one um, on the August the 8th, okay, and here's another one on the August the 8th and another one on August the 8th and um, July the 16th. So they regularly, looks like, uh, issue uh, slap slap these uh, uh, clerks masquerading as judges. And uh, so this is actually a very viable alternative that we can have uh, to get a remedy and to put a stop to these, these bought and paid for whores masquerading as judges. And so um, um, anyways, um, I just wanted to talk about this here uh, briefly. This is not going to be a very long one. But we all need to be uh, doing this. Uh, the form, um, this is the form, although if you go back to their website, whoops, wrong one. Um, how to file a complaint. There's actually a, a form that you can uh, get online. It's an online form, and then I think it prints it out. Um, but it, it has, I have some issues with it. Um, and, and I happen to get a hold of um, a PDF form that uh, is from them. That's this, this what this is. And um, like, for example, they want a date of birth. And, um, and I put in here hearsay. Now, when you put that in there, it, it, it comes back and says that we can't accept that in that format. Um, but it's there. And, and what you do is you print off this form and so, um, uh, and then you file that with the complaint. Now, there's some specific instructions um, um, that uh, that you use, and there's a mailing address and um, any additional uh, pages or related documents. I file a criminal complaint with it, and um, and so um, so I put on the date of birth as hearsay. I finished high school in 1975. The only reason they want to know a date of birth is that you're old enough to uh, uh, make a contract. And so uh, otherwise, it's none of their damn business. And uh, the phone number, that's not even a good phone number. Um, and uh, these are the case numbers. And, um, and the opposing attorney, if I know who it is, uh, I'll put them in here. But they're not a county attorney as required. Uh, by the Texas Constitution and we'll go into this. This is actually a two-page form. This is page two and you can actually um, um, add pages, you know, but, but two pages is fine because this is a summary and it references the criminal complaint. So that's all that matters. And so, um, um, and they want to know if I want to keep my comp my identity confidential. No, I couldn't care less. I'd rather be in their face. Uh, anyways, um, so uh, the days of the alleged misconduct, the latest. Okay, so I was assaulted and unlawfully arrested for expired as registration when registration is none of their business under the Texas Transportation Code 502.003, which um, all of that stuff I put in the criminal complaint. One of the things they say is, please do not cite case law in your complaint. Well, I put it in the affidavit. So there's obviously not a lot of room in here. So I just uh, make the arguments and talk about their codes. And um, so uh, um, when registration is none of their business under Texas Transportation Code 502-003, uh, and, and it's also a Class C misdemeanor, which fails to be a crime under their Texas Government Code 79.001, because a Class C misdemeanor is punished by fine only under their Texas Penal Code 12.23. Therefore, there was no probable cause to arrest me, no lawful arrest, and it's a civil matter as evidence in the demand to dismiss, uh, which is attached uh, 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 with its attached declaration of criminals, which is attached here too. So, so I filed a demand to dismiss 
um, all of these documents are going to be available in my Yahoo group so uh, you can uh, uh, modify them to suit your situation um, anyways um, this one here is for Colleyville okay Colleyville Municipal Court Sarah Del Carmen the chief judge there chief magistrate or whatever you want to call her bought and paid for a whore selling her just us anyways um, Therefore, there is no probable cause to arrest me, no lawful arrest. It's a civil matter as evidence on the demand to dismiss, and it's attached declaration of criminals, which is attached here to all of which is incorporated herein by reference in its entirety. Their Gestapo's thug issued a citation um, after I rejected their, and I rejected their offer of contract pursuant to Regulation Z as evidence in the Declaration of Criminals, which is attached here to, all of which is incorporated herein by reference in its entirety. I had a friend of mine go with me, so I have a witness. Under instructions from Del Carmen, the administrator of Del Carmen's so-called court sent several threatening letters through the mail in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1341 and 1342 as evidence in the demand to dismiss and the declaration of criminals, true copy of which is attached here to all of which is incorporated herein by reference in its entirety. I failed to show for their kangaroo court and Del Carmen issued a warrant for a civil matter in violation of Texas Transportation Code 707.019, says they can't issue a warrant, and under Texas Penal Code 3810, failure to appear is punishable by fine only. And or she forced my signature to a capius, which is a debt instrument, prior to us obtaining jurisdiction uh, and prior to holding their show trial or a conviction in violation of Texas Code of Criminal Procedure Article 43.01 fine, and a fake capius fails to be a warrant. I was subsequently unlawfully arrested based on Del Carmen's unlawful and illegal warrant, and she coerced an appearance bond for me, accusing me of being a defendant when a defendant is someone accused of a crime under their Texas Government Code 79.001, thereby demonstrating that this case was prejudged from the beginning because the charge is for a Class C misdemeanor, which fails to be a crime but is a civil matter, and yet she's called me a defendant, which is somebody accused of a crime. Del Carmen was also assaulting me with the Roman cult Sestake Trust slave name uh, and her coerced appearance bond, thereby demonstrating she intended to perjure her oath of office. She intended to enslave me, which is evidence, uh, evidenced by the fact that they offered me time served for the two days in their jail, thereby demonstrating their debtor's prisons in violation of Texas Constitution, Article 1, Section 18. Del Carmen's appearance bond further threatened more of her unlawful and illegal, illegal warrants for, uh, for a civil matter as evidenced in the Declaration of Criminals, a true copy of which is attached here to all of which is incorporated herein by reference in its entirety, thereby demonstrating that Del Carmen is a bought and paid for a clerk masquerading as a judge, impersonating a public servant in violation of te Texas Penal Code 3711, pursuing a malicious prosecution, engaging in official oppression, in violation of Texas Penal Code 39.03, subjecting me to their satanic religious ceremony in violation of 18 U.S.C. 247, subjecting me to the deprivation of my rights and immunities in violation of their 18, uh, Title 18 U.S.C. 242, and conspiring with their Gestapo thugs to threaten, intimidate, oppress, and injure me in the free exercise of my right to fail to participate in their extortion racket in violation of 18 U.S.C. 241. The prosecutor fails to be a county attorney as required by Texas Constitution, Article 5, Section 21, and is therefore impersonating a public servant, and Del Carmen knows it, which means it's a conspiracy. As a bar member and officer of the court, Del Carmen is required to know all of this, therefore is deliberate, calculated, and malicious. Now, you know, <laughs> I think I think I got a home run here, folks. <laughs> I guess we'll see. I, uh, the, 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 um, I served these on the uh, Judicial Council here. Uh, matter of fact, they got it today, so we'll see what happens. But, again, you know, you get the government you deserve, okay? So we need to start um, complaining about these whores, and and the more people that complain, I guarantee you, they're going to take notice, okay? And, and uh, so um, that's why I'm publishing this, because the more people that, that, that do these things and... and and you've got a, a great template here for any traffic matter. Uh, this is this this uh, basically you just modify it a little bit, and you you got your text for your complaint. And then um, 
and then here's my uh, uh, criminal complaint right here um, which is uh, it's actually 17 pages so it's 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 not very long compared to some of my criminal complaints and but I've got some attachments and and I'm not going to show them in here um, but uh, so the important thing is uh, as I want to cut to the chase and try and keep this as short as possible for uh, uh, many people have have uh, 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 busy schedules and so so I don't want to uh, uh, use up a lot of time um, but um, so uh, I'll just cut to the chase and hit the highlights in this affidavit um, it's well established that the Union Army invaded Texas in 1862 and put Texas under martial law article 1 of the Libra Code that martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of occupation or conquest the uh, presence of the hostile army proclaims as martial law and then uh, article 2 of the Libra Code I witness the only way martial law ends is by specific mention in a treaty of peace or by special proclamation in the commander-in-chief and martial law does not cease during the hostile occupation expressed by pr pr special proclamation ordered by the commander-in-chief or by special mention in the treaty of peace concluding the war I witness that there is no treaty of peace with Texas or the Confederacy and there have been no special proclamations ending the martial law by the President of the United States therefore martial law continues to this day and I witness that martial law affects chiefly the police therefore all police are military police article 10 of the Libra Code martial law affects and it, it, it talks about it anyways I witness the martial law only affects subjects of the enemy and subjects are government employees and corporations and anything created by government and uh, this is McCullough versus Maryland 1819 or have received privileges okay and this is the key okay and we all need to understand that when you participate in their privileges it's a contract the rights of sovereignty extend to all persons and things not privileged that's why they have to get those offer all those freebies to those so-called illegal aliens because they need to get them in a contract so they can enslave them that's what it's all about folks uh, anyways and it continues I witness that under Texas code a crime is defined by Texas government code as a misdemeanor that can be punishable by jail and a felony and a defendant is only someone accused of a crime and this is Texas government code 79.001 I talk about it in there Crime means a misdemeanor punishable by confinement or jail or be a felony. And a defendant means a person's accused of a crime. And then uh, and then I witness that a Class C misdemeanor can be punished by fine only. An offense under this section is a Class C misdemeanor if the offense for which the actor's appearance is required is punishable by fine only. And that's under Texas Penal Code 3810, bail jumping and failure to appear. Okay, that means they can only fine you for failing to appear, folks. I witness that conviction of a class C misdemeanor does not impose any legal disability or disadvantage. Uh, conviction of a class C misdemeanor and says that. Now, um, these Texas codes, okay, these are great when you're in Texas, but if you're not in Texas, then it's not going to help you much, okay? Except that you got to look for similar things in your local state statutes, okay? And and you're going to find similar things, um, and so. Um, that's all I can tell you okay is you got to look for similar things in your local statutes to support but this is the argument and just look for similar things in your local statutes and anybody in Texas can use this stuff hands down of course if you're in another state you obviously can't complain com can't complain to the uh, state commission on judicial conduct in Texas you got to find your local one and uh, and they're gonna have their own little rules and things like that and, and forms so uh, this stuff is mostly, uh, but this is still, this is going to get you going in the right direction. Um, I witnessed, this is 26, I witnessed that somebody convicted of a Class C misdemeanor can be fined only a maximum of 500 bucks. Um, and that's Texas Penal Code 12.23. And, uh, and therefore a Class C misdemeanor fails to be a crime and is therefore a civil dispute. And so you've got to understand, and that's important to say, okay, and the reason is, is because in the law it's either civil or criminal there's nothing else okay it's either civil or criminal there's nothing else if it's not a crime it's civil and um, and I witness that a warrant may not be issued for failure to pay the fine and that's Texas Transportation Code 707.019 failure to pay the civil penalty I witnessed um, 
Anyways, and so what happened is I was at, at this bank and this, this pig went and stopped me. And, uh, and, and a motorist stopped by a traffic officer for a traffic offense would be considered arrested, okay? They don't want to say you're arrested, you're detained. Well, don't feed me that crap. It's an arrest. And any restraint, however slight, upon another's liberty to come and go as one pleases constitutes an arrest. I witnessed that in order for a police officer to stop me, he must have probable cause that a crime had taken place. And this is uh, Article 4 in Amendment prohibits law enforcement officers from arresting citizens without probable cause. Arrest made without probable cause violates the Fourth Amendment. Holding involuntary civil confinement is a massive curtailment of liberty as tantamount to the infringement of being arrested and can be made only upon probable cause. The test for a police officer's sufficient basis for probable cause did the officer have a sufficient basis to make a practical common sense decision that a fair probability of crime existed. Once the officer's actions fail to satisfy this test, it may appear that no reasonably objective officer could have believed that probable cause existed to make an arrest. And, uh, and, and then it goes on, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals citing cases in both the U.S. Supreme Court, Fifth, Seventh, Eighth, and Ninth Circuit held that by definition, probable cause to arrest can only exist in relation to criminal conduct. A civil disputes cannot give rise to probable cause. So, uh, anyways, and he continues on. So then he was, in a, uh, by turning on his emergency lights, okay, when no probable cause for a crime to exist, therefore, no emergency. Therefore, he's abusing his official capacity, and that's a violation of Texas Penal Code 39.202. And then he's increasing the social pressure. Um, Hey, and this is the first thing, this is in Texas, they, they say that uh, that you have to identify yourself, um, and, and this is the code in Texas that says failure to identify a person uh, commits an offense if he intentionally refuses to give his name to the four days of birth to a peace officer who has lawfully arrested the person or re and requested the information. Well, if there's no probable cause, folks, there's no lawful arrest. There was no crime, there was no lawful arrest, and it was his job to know that. I witnessed that the Texas Transportation Code says that nobody will require anybody to register a vehicle, pay the tax, or license fee. And this is Texas Transportation Code 502.003. A political subdivision of the state may not require an owner of a motor vehicle to register the vehicle. <coughs> Excuse me. Pay a motor vehicle registration fee or pay an occupation tax or license fee. In other words, they can't require you to get a license driver's license, okay? And so, therefore, there's no law that says anybody has to register their vehicle, but chiefs of police deliberately screen for and hire low intelligence thugs like Collegeville Military Police Officer Smith and give them guns and quotas and tell them to go out and generate revenue under direction of supervision of their military commissioners masquerading as judges like those described herein, okay? And that's, that's the judicial complaint, okay? Because that's what they are, folks. It's a martial law, it's a military commissioner. Not a judge, he's a bot paid for a court masquerading as a judge. And then I go a little bit further. I witnessed the text of transportation code was probably enacted because of court rulings on the Uniform Commercial Code. And uh, this is the uh, Uniform Commercial Code 9 1 on classification of goods. Goods are consumer goods that they're used or bought primarily for personal, family, or household purposes. And then they're also equipment that they're used or bought primarily in business, including farming or, for, or a profession, or by a debtor who's a non-profit organization or a government or subdivision or agency if the goods are not included in the definitions of inventory. Okay, and so then it goes on. This is some court cases under UCC 9-109. There's a real distinction between goods purchased for personal use and those purchased for business use. The two are mutually exclusive in the general uh, use. The principal use to which the property is put should be considered as determinative. In other words, the principal use determines what, whether it's consumer goods or whether it's business equipment. The classification of goods in UCC 9-109 are mutually exclusive. In other words, it's either one or the other. Automobile purchased for the purpose of transporting buyer to and from his place of employment was consumer goods, as defined by UCC 9-109. These are all court cases. The provisions of UCC 2-316 of the Maryland UCC do not apply to sales of consumer goods, a term which includes automobiles, whether new or used, that are bought primarily for personal, family, or household. 
vehicle not used for commercial activity is a consumer goods. It is not a type of vehicle required to be registered and use tax paid. My registration is none of their damn business. So you don't have to register it, you don't have to pay the tax, okay? And that's what this that's what Texas Code said right up here too. Right there. A political subdivision of the state may not require you to register the vehicle, pay the registration fee, or pay an occupation tax. Thus, self-driven vehicles are classified according to the use to which they are put rather than according to the means by which they are propelled. And the, the Supreme Court in Arthur v. Morgan held that carriages were not properly classified as were properly classified, excuse me, were properly classified as household effects, and we see no reason that automobiles should not be similarly disposed of. A soldier's personal automobile is part of his household goods, okay? So then that even applies to government employees. And that's a Texas court case. The exemptions provided for in Section 1 of the Motor Vehicle Transportation License Act of 1925 are in favor of those who solely transport their own property or employees or both, and those who transport no persons or property for hire or compensation by motor vehicle have been determined in the Bacon Service Corporation to be lawful exemptions. Consumer goods, automobile for transportation to and from work, the use of a vehicle by its owner for purposes of traveling to and from his place, his employment, is a personal as opposed to a business use, and that term as used in UCC 9-109, and the vehicle will be classified as consumer goods rather than equipment. In view of this rule of statutory provision that the supervising officials may exempt such persons when the transportation is not on a commercial basis, means that they must exempt them. And even the Texas Constitution. Article 8, Section 1D of the Texas Constitution says that the legislature by general law is exempt from ad valorem taxation, household goods not held or used for the production of income, and personal effects not held or used for the production of income. That's household goods and consumer goods. So, um, I think that pretty well covers all of the uh, Mean. Okay, this is paragraph page 5, and so it goes on for another 12 pages, so I like to throw mud at them, and, uh, and all the stuff that went on. So, anyways, the point is, is that you just make up an affidavit, and, uh, and, you, and you can also, um, let's see. You can also, what I did also, is I did this challenge to jurisdiction, and then I attached the affidavit, this is the demand to dismiss right here, and and uh, I, I uh, it's by special appearance, defendant in error, plaintiff in error, okay, and uh, Colleyville, Texas, District of Columbia Municipal Corporation Police Court, okay, that's what they are, and it's the state of Texas. They're calling it the state of Texas, and so therefore, under Texas Constitution, they have to have a county attorney, since the county attorney is supposed to. Uh, let's find it. This is Article 5, Section 21, Texas Constitution. The county attorney shall represent the state in all cases in the district and inferior courts in their respective counties. Well, municipal courts and inferior courts. And so, so if there's not a county attorney there, then he's impersonating a public servant, and the judge knows it. Okay, so don't give me that. Anyways, so the whole purpose of this thing, okay, is I go through... And, and show them how, the, first of all, I'm challenging jurisdiction. And the so-called court has defined the defendant error due process from the beginning, and then I go through all of the ways that they deny due process. And, um, and so, and then I attach the affidavit as evidence, okay, because under the Uniform Commercial Code, uh, they're required to make certain presumptions unless there's evidence introduced that defeats the presumption, okay? So you've got to introduce evidence. And so, um, again, and so you're demanding that they dismiss the case. And so this, uh, uh, this is like a 49-page document. This will also be available in the uh, Yahoo group. Um, anyways, so uh, that's about it. Um, 
I uh, encourage everyone to take advantage of this, to start filing complaints against these bought and paid for whores. Take witnesses with you to court, because if you go to this uh, judicial complaint here, um, they want to know if there's witnesses, okay? So the witnesses are always useful, okay? Or you can have a, a witness make an affidavit and, and keep it short and sweet, okay? Like uh, the affidavit, when I rejected their offer of contract, the affidavit is a one-page affidavit that says that I saw, that he saw me deliver the rejection of offer of contract to whoever. You see what I'm saying? That's all I have to say. And, um, and it's a one-page affidavit. And keep it short and sweet. Uh, at least for other people, you can make yours. You can elaborate on stuff all over the place, but uh, you just say that I, the, the, the person that witnesses, and I witnessed this, I witnessed that, I witnessed this, I witnessed that, and that's it. That's you, it, you don't come to any conclusions. It's just that they witnessed this, they witnessed that, and so, um, and so. Uh, um, anyways, um, this is the form for Texas. Okay, and uh, if you're in another state, then you're going to have to find the forms and um, the proper way of doing it, this will get you started. Um, uh, you're gonna have to have your arguments, the more, like this one I think is gonna be a home run, I'll bet you, I'll bet you heads roll. And uh, so we'll see, you know, that's all I can say. Um, I mean, I don't know for a fact that they will. I'd be, I'd be shocked, well, in a way I wouldn't, but, but I'd still be shocked. And, and again, um, there's been a lot of things that have changed because of stuff that I've been doing. And so I think that this will affect some change for sure. And um, uh, there's supposed to be a hearing coming up in a, in a, in a week or so. I'm not sure if I'm even gonna go, but, um, but um, I'll bet you there'll be some changes. There's, there's been changes already that I've noticed. And um, so I would encourage uh, everybody to, uh, if you're not in Texas, um, to figure out how to do it in your local state. Every state has this kind of stuff. And if you're in Texas, I mean, it's all here right for you right now. Um, everything is here uh, and you can just modify it a little bit. And uh, for, for a donation, I'll review it if you'd like. Um, uh, but uh, but it's, it's all, everything is here for you ready to do. And um, uh, so I would uh, encourage everyone to start filing judicial complaints. You've got to be on point. It doesn't do any good to complain about something that doesn't matter. Okay, and that's why I bring up all of these codes, and uh, because they have to follow their codes, and uh, it's all martial law. Okay, and so, um, and so I, I think that uh, I mean I'm basically accusing this judge of multiple felonies, and um, I'll bet you they're gone. Okay, if they're not, if they're not in jail. Um, um, you know, I guess we'll see. Uh, I'd be surprised if they were in jail, but um, but um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden they're not there anymore. And, um, you know, anyways, so we'll see. Uh, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you get something out of this. It, it's, it's, I can't do everything, okay? I'm only one guy. Um, I, can, I can tell you what I'm doing. Um, I, I know I filed these things before and um, and uh, my computer got stolen after after because I had everything scanned and then plus you know I mean <clears throat> most of my junks in storage and hard to find and so I haven't been able to follow up on things like I'd like to uh, but but I got to tell you that um, I know that uh, positive uh, changes have been affected and uh, if you don't complain, nothing's gonna change for sure. So you gotta complain. And uh, matter of fact, in, in the, when the Nazi war trials, um, after the Second World War, when they put Hitler and all the Nazis on trial, that was what they said, nobody complained. Okay, well, I'm complaining, and we need to get more people complaining. Uh, but you gotta be on point. Anyways, thanks for watching, have a great day.